Seven minutes past seven now. This morning, we're talking about the reaction to a big green fence going up at a Gloucestershire beauty spot. More than 1,400 people have signed an online petition after the fence was put up at Lydney Harbour. It cordons off access to the final few metres either side of the boat channel before you actually reach the River Severn. Now, the landowner, the Environment Agency, says the increase in visitor numbers has increased the risk of an accident. Our reporter, Dan Ayres, has been to take a look. I'm taking a wander down the very windy Lydney Harbour here as I look across this stunning views of the River Severn up towards the Forest of Dean and then if you look behind me you can see the two Severn bridges that link in England to Wales. It's a very picturesque harbour but quite a lot of the locals are not happy because after this wonderful regeneration work that's bought a new sculpture trail it's bought a new cafe that I can see to my left an increase in visitors has meant safety concerns from the Environment Agency and they say that they've had to put a giant green fence stopping you from getting right close to the River Severn there you go you can hear this giant green fence just in front of me which is blocking that view and some people are actually like do you know what if it's a temporary measure it's not that bad you can still see through it but a lot of people are unhappy because the regeneration has brought people to Lydney Harbour and is this gonna put people off what do you make of this new fencing I think it's a shame I can understand but I think it's a bit health and safety gone mad in many respects we used to be able to get out onto the edge there and take some wonderful pictures and have some enjoy some wonderful views I I don't think Lydney is that busy that it needs or warrants this sort of thing the argument from the environment agency that put it there if they've said that the regeneration has brought too many people and they're worried an accident could happen because of that very sharp sort of cliff face onto the river seven what do you say to that well I've been down here for 23 years and uh I haven't always come to Lydney, but on the times that I've come here, I've always felt very, very safe. I think it's a shame because it's what I would call a place of natural beauty. And um, I, I think people are responsible. I don't, you know, you could say that about anywhere now. I think it's just health and safety gone mad. Because it is a very picturesque view, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely stunning. And, and uh, some of the sunsets behind us here are absolutely moving and beautiful. It's very peaceful. I know a lot of people come here for, for their health and well-being uh, and they find it a nice place to just download and decompress and all this sort of thing. I, I just, um, when I first drove up and saw it today, I didn't even know it had gone up at the weekend, but I, thought it was, I just thought it was madness, really. And, it, and it, it's unsightly. I think it's for a health and safety uh, reason. Uh, I'd imagine when they've finished the work, they'll come down. I wouldn't have thought it's a long-term thing. I mean, yes, there is a lot of work going on. They were dredging a few weeks ago, and they've been clearing a lot of the, you know, the undergrowth up in the basin area. Yeah, towards the car park area towards as well, yeah. Car park. So that looks more, far better to look at now. They've been clearing the uh, slipway over the other side, wh where you can sometimes walk up. But that's. I would say people would be more moaning about uh, maybe that being blocked off, not being able to sort of walk up to the top or cycle up to the top rather than walk into the end of the pier. I've, from seeing the works that are going on, it's only for an interim period and uh, when the works are gone, gone, the gates will be gone. It's just part of the regeneration of it, isn't it? And so yeah, I don't think any problem. If it's, a per if it's a permanent fixture, would you still have an issue? Would you have an issue with it at all? Perhaps, but again, I can't see all this being permanent because you can see that, you know, there's Harris fence in. That's obviously not going to be here all the time. I'd be surprised if it's a permanent feature. Well, Dan Marfel started the petition, which is calling for the fencing to be removed or replaced with something more sensitive to the surroundings. Dan, morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Now, this is a, a gorgeous part of the world. For those who don't know Lydney Harbour, just give me a bit of a general sense of, of the surroundings there and, and your reaction when you, you walked down there for the first time and were confronted by this fence. Well, it, it was just an absolute monstrosity. The, the way it's been put up, I just feel it's just so unsympathetic to the area. Um, the, the views out across the River Severn now are completely blocked. Bearing in mind that we are at the height of the tourism season, you know, in the Forest of Dean. And I just think it, it just looks such an eyesore. And they could have done so many different things just to restrict people's access from those areas that are being worked on personally.
Let me give you the statement from the Environment Agency. They say that the piers have been closed for the past 12 months with temporary gates, but with a recent increase in visitor numbers due to all the improvement works, the piers are now permanently closed to the public because of the high risk of a fall into the fast-flowing River Severn. You've got to sympathise with them, haven't you, really? All the regeneration work to make it even better an attraction than it already is, it's driving footfall. They need to be careful. Yeah, I mean, I do understand that there are safety issues, but there are so many um, piers up and down the country. There's, um, there's harbours that do not have fencing, do not have the barriers, such as in Plymouth, for instance. There's no barriers there. They, they're all open. So why we, they feel that we need them in Lydney, I really don't understand. I think actually where the fences are put up right now is more of a danger to people because there's, you know, that you could fall straight into the mud. What's the biggest issue for you, Dan, if I have to say, is, is it the aesthetic element or is it the lack of access to where you might have gone before? Well, to be honest, I think there's a number of reasons. I think there's a, a lack of transparency. Um, the fact that these fences just seem to appear overnight um, and obviously the statements that the harbour master made basically stating that, you know, the, pier, the north and south piers would be permanently closed the fences would potentially be a permanent feature. I think it's a mass miscommunication that I think has just sort of upset a lot of people in the local area, to be honest. Uh, so what's the next move here then, Dan? Is, is, it, is this the whole idea of this to come together with the Environment Agency and, and try to come to some sort of compromise? I mean, absolutely. I mean, we're not doing it to annoy anybody, you know. We, we just want to... Um, we, we, want, we want that transparency. We want to be able to see that I mean, for generations, people have been going out onto the piers, taking, for, you know, photography. And, and we would just love for them to work with us, communicate with the local people, instead of just getting on and doing what they're doing and having no communication whatsoever. I think that's what, what has upset a lot of people. And I just, I really think the, the fences that have been erected are just a monstrosity. They're an absolute eyesore. And I think they could do much better. Good to talk to you this morning, Dan. Thank you very much indeed. That's Dan Marfell who started this petition, which is calling for the fencing to be removed there. More than 1,400 people have signed it um, after this fencing was put up at Lydney Harbour. Um, if you've never been there before, it's a gorgeous spot. Absolutely beautiful. Right open onto the, uh, onto the river. You can see your power station across the way. It's, it's, it's a stunning part, uh, a part of our county. Uh, it can be quite um, wild and windy at times, but I think that adds to the, to the nature of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. But let's talk to Martin Quine from the Environment Agency. Martin, morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Let's, let's just go back to the beginning here. Just, to, just refresh our memory. Why is this fencing necessary now? So over the past two, two to three years, we've been working closely with the Forest of Dean District Council on their Destination Lindley Harbour programme. And consequently, we've seen a huge increase in visitor numbers and a diversity of different users to the site. Consequently, as the landowner, the environment agency has had to review our public safety risk assessments. And as a result, we have put some additional measures in place. So what you're saying is, Martin, that this is just this has got too busy. It's too successful. It's a victim of its own success. In terms of the fence we've got there now, they were solely there for the construction work. So we're in the process of restoring the outer sea gate. The fences will be replaced with something much more sympathetic, and we will be working with Historic England to ensure it's much more in keeping with the site. We will also work with the various users of the site, the emergency services, the yacht club, etc., just to make sure that everyone's got the right access for when they need it. You heard there from Dan, Dan Marfell, who started this petition, saying generations of people have been going out onto that pier. I mean, generations, families over the years have been going out there without a problem. And now this has popped up, effectively not quite overnight, but in the last few weeks and months. Is this a little bit, to, to coin a phrase that one or two have mentioned this morning, just a little bit overkill? Yes, and in terms of where we're at, I think it's a proportionate risk. So there are areas of the site which has got full, full views of the estuary and really good access of those views that we know that people love and enjoy. But we have to balance that between the different user needs. And, and as, as we go forward, we will review that and make sure that anything we do do is in keeping with the site as it evolves. 
I think it's fair to say a lot of the work and the amount of investment the Environment Agency has put into mid with the work that are ongoing, as mentioned by some of your listeners. Could you accept that you, you might have communicated this better? Yes, we, we're more than happy to talk to all the community groups. We will be talking to them over the coming weeks just to make sure that everyone's content with what we're doing and, and also to, to listen to any concerns. But would it have been a better idea to do it, Martin, before this fence got put up? I think it's a balance. We've had a site for, for the construction of the, the sea gates for about 12 months. We replaced the Harris fencing, which was also mentioned, with the green fencing that's there now. Consequently, we put the green fencing up because the Harris fencing wasn't doing the job. So you could say that the green fencing there now is the temporary measure for a, a longer term solution to be put in place. So the idea now then is, I mentioned this to Don Marfil, and, and I guess you're in agreement with your environment from the Environment Agency as well. You've got to have dialogue with some of these people who've, who've got this petition together to get them on site here. And as you said, put something in place that is A, a bit more aesthetically pleasing and B, might give a little bit more access. Absolutely. And dialogue is really important. And that's what we intend to do going forward. Um, But by all means, we'll we'll talk to anybody, explain the decisions and and listen to their concerns, um, should they still have them. Martin, it's good to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Martin Quine from the Environment Agency with us this morning. Dave has, has dropped us a message. Hello, Dave. There must be stats around somewhere about how many people have fallen off those walls over the years. If there are not, then does that not show that the answer is none? So as one of the interviews said, it sounds like the fence is a result of a health and safety jobs worth justifying their existence. But it's interesting, isn't it, Dave, though? And to put Martin, you know, we've just spoken to Martin here. uh, The footfall there has increased as this destination has got more popular. So you wouldn't want to be in that situation where there is a problem and you could have done something about it. Uh, It is not to put words in Martin's mouth, but is in essence what he was saying. They've got to look after people. More and more people are using it. They've got to be a bit careful about it. Thank you very much. 0800 121 7575 or text.